Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Seneca County Commissioner meeting. It's Thursday, March 21st, 2022, uh, 10 a.m. And we'll open the meeting with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Kirshner on there? Nope, I got a son name the link here quick. Okay, uh, Commissioner Schuff, would you like to open with a prayer, please? Sure. Please well. Dear Lord, please uh, please watch over us and bless us as we go to discuss uh, finances, personnel, property, and issues facing our county and community. Please help to give us your wisdom and guidance as we go to deliberate and discuss uh, various things facing uh, our great uh, county here in Seneca County. Uh, also, in a special way, please watch out for our uh, brothers and sisters over in uh, Europe as uh, war is raging on in Ukraine. Please uh, shield them, give them your protection, and uh, watch out for all of your children. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, thank you. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Kirshner's not on yet. Commissioner Paradiso? He's on. Is he on? Here. He's jumped on. Oh, let me unmute him. Uh, make him a co host. Give him a second. Okay, I'm on mute. I'm here. Commissioner okay, Yes. Commissioner Schaff. Here. Commissioner Paradiso. Here. Okay, so we're all here. And um, I will accept the motion to approve the digital audio video recording of our previous board session on Thursday, March 24th for our regular session meetings. So moved. Second. Roll call. Uh, Commissioner Paradiso? Yes. Commissioner Schaff? Yes. Commissioner Kirshner? Yes. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we have uh, guests today. Uh, I'm going to ask Mr. Hartzell, the athletic director of uh, Columbia High School, to come on up and, and uh, take over from here. We're pretty excited. You were here last week with uh, Brody Conley and uh, state champ, and you brought another group of state champions with you. So we're really, really, really excited to have you. Yeah, and actually, I'm, I'm going to defer to uh, to Coach uh, Jamie Hep because as the athletic director, um, I didn't was not in the tumbling or the dance moves or anything like that <laughs> uh, because they don't play '80s music. So I, I opted out of that. Um, but I will say, you know, greatly appreciated to have our student athletes represented here, and even last week with an outstanding representation with with Brody Conley. But we have amazing student athletes that are on our cheerleading squad. Um, high school football, high school basketball season, we have over 45, 50 girls that try out for essentially 16 positions, uh, minus uh, the freshman wow. squad, which is uh, solely for freshmen. Um, Coach Hepp and her staff do a phenomenal job with that. They represent us extremely well um, on and off the, the uh, respective fields that they participate in. And on top of that, these girls juggle so much outside of what they do for cheerleading and their dance squads, um, their club teams, but they are, they are essentially, um, out of the 24 girls, we have 22 that, that have a 3.2 or above GPA. So um, same, same with Brody Conley being a 3.5 <clears throat> and above. It's phenomenal that we have girls that can balance life, academics, athletics, and still represent us very well. So I'm gonna defer to Coach Hepp. So, but thank you very much for recognizing thank our student Mr. athletes Arthur. at Temple Columbia. Come on up, it's great. So again, thank you very much for having um, us here for recognizing us for our state um, championship win. So we had our banquet last evening for basketball and competition season. And sitting back and looking at that and going through everything, um, I had never really sat down and calculated how long I've been here. Um, but I have coached at Columbian for a little over 25 years and have been involved with Chip and Shirley now for over 33 with my family. So my mom coached middle school for 20 and as soon as I graduated um, from Columbian, I drove back and forth from Ohio State um, to back and forth to Tiffin every weekend and coached with her. And then after I graduated from there, came back and 
main reason, honestly, to always come back to Columbian was to give kids things that I could do that maybe Tiffin didn't provide in other ways. I was on the dance team at Ohio State and worked for a cheerleading dance company all through college. So instead of them paying for people to come in, yeah. I wanted to come back and do that here in Tiffin. So hopefully we've helped them along the way and to grow in their academics and lifelong lessons as well. So like you said, we have um, nearly 50 kids that try out for our JV varsity team and freshman team. Every year it's growing stronger and stronger and definitely heartbreaking because most of these kids have been with me through seventh grade. So it is, they never think it's as rough on me as what it really is. Are you, is everybody a senior here? No, we have no? three seniors. We have okay. Bella Bluest, Lydia Cole, and Savannah Simcoe. And our three junior captains, Audrey Hepp, Faith Egbert, and Ryder Smith. So we um, awesome. won our game day division and our state champs with that. What is wonderful about that is we used our TC band. You have to do your fight song and what you do at your games. So that was excellent and meant a lot because we really go on tradition at Columbia and what we did 30 years ago is what our kids are still doing with the band. And that is very near and dear to my heart and I don't let them change it. So um, yes. the alumni love coming back and seeing the same thing that they did. So that means a lot to us and that's the routine we won state champions with. So that was super exciting. We were able to use our band, which meant a lot also. Mike Meadows was great with that. And then also our traditional routine, which is all the tumbling and the dancing and the more athletic side of cheerleading, we were second runner up with that. So hats off to them because we do that differently than a lot of division three and two and one schools. We do not have a practice facility here in Tiffin. Um, we use what we can in our spacing in our schools, but a competition floor does not fit in our elementary buildings. So, um, and that's where we practice. Thankfully we have somewhere. But we do that without ever having a full floor. So that really shows how talented they are in the work they put into that. We are grateful to Tiffin University who helped us out this year. And we went there about nine times or so just to go through, through some things with them. And secondly, I learned after being out of some competition realms a little bit this year that a lot of these schools don't cheer on the sidelines anymore. They specifically have a competition team. And then they have a different football cheer team and a different basketball cheer team and we do it all. Our kids cheer football, basketball and go to competitions. Thankfully our basketball team was still in regionals and we actually cheered the night before our competition. So um, <laughs> we're grateful that we can wear all those hats and it's a testament to their abilities on they can do all that and cheer on the sidelines versus being strictly a competition team. It's impressive. So. We are very thankful. Thank you guys for wow. recognizing our team, and we are very grateful for that. And all the support of Tiffin has been overwhelming, I guess, for me, and absolutely amazing. So, yeah, it, it's thank wow. you, Commissioner Kirshner. Any comments? Well, Jamie, you're kind of dating things here. I know. <laughs> I've known you since I was years. a kid. <laughs> I remember your dad and Lindy in the bank uh, probably four years ago. Uh, oh, yeah. As a little kid. So yep. I'm so proud to see you develop and so proud to see you back at Tiffin. And, uh, you know, being a born and raised, as we call it, a uh, yep. person who has dedicated all of her time to this. So God bless you and, and thank you for all your hard work. And ladies, we couldn't be any prouder of your cheering. Uh, uh, we talked about it on the radio this morning. Uh, so we got a little bit of uh, who knows there. And uh, uh, I guess that we just kind of all flipped out over you. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, my, uh, Commissioner Kirscher, did you ever cheer to uh, Taking Care of Business by Bachman Turner Overdrive? That's his favorite song. <laughs> so, maybe he can sing and dance yeah. with you. If you could put together a routine for that, Jamie, I think that would be Hey, we'll have to work on that this summer. So, uh, Commissioner Shuff. Yeah, we have a proclamation for you, so if you... Would you uh, like to come up, uh, stand up here, and we'll get a photo in front of the, front of the flags. Uh, Commissioner Kirschner, he's here in... Uh, uh, Mr. Hartzell, you want to come up, please? Sure. And uh, the Columbian family. Okay, Commissioner, uh, he's going to read the proclamation while you're up here. And I'll stand over here if that's okay. Okay, Commissioner Schuff. All right, we have a proclamation here from the Commissioner's office. Whereas during the February 26th and 27th Ohio Association of Secondary School Administrators State Cheer and Dance Championships, 
the Tiffin Columbian High School cheer team won the Division II Game Day State Championship. And whereas this marked the school's first cheerleading state title since 2006, and whereas Coach Jamie Hepp and this talented group of young athletes showed great teamwork, work ethic, and dedication to their sport and to their team this season. And whereas this incredible accomplishment should be celebrated by all throughout the community. Not only should we marvel at the talent and ability of the team, but we should also give credit to the <coughs> mental fortitude it takes to compete at the highest level in the state. And whereas <coughs> school administrators and staff members have remarked that this team is full of some of the most talented and hardworking people in the school, the team's selflessness, compassion, and belief in each other were just, the, some, were just some of the many factors that helped propel the team to a state championship. And whereas the TC cheerleading squad is full of bright, talented, and hardworking individuals who have had countless successes inside and outside the sport, this state championship is just one of many accolades we expect this group to achieve moving forward. The Seneca County Board of Commissioners, on behalf of the community, wishes and congratulate the team and to remind you that all that you all make us proud. It is people like you who make our community a great place and make it what it is. And there in witness thereof, we the Seneca County Board of Commissioners have here on to set our hand to this proclamation, the 31st day of March in the year of our Lord, 2022. Commissioners Mike Kirshner, Anthony Paradiso, and Tyler Shelf. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Could you two jump in for a picture? Commissioners, just get on the end there, so I can fit everybody in. Okay, let me actually center this up real quick. Okay, I'm going to take a couple here. Uh, three, two, one. Going to do one more. Three, two, one. Okay, great job, ladies. Congrats. Thank you. 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 And you look thank you. Hey, man, thank okay. you. Yes, yeah. all the time. I, I knew you were, <laughs> you were a half-point again. Thank you. Oh, my. Is that yours? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Thanks for coming in. Yes. Super chat. Thank, thank you. you. Really enjoyed having you here. Thank you. See you, Nancy. Uh, a bit opening, or do we... Uh, no, I gotta wait. We'll keep going. Yep. Okay. Mary? Four is yours. Thank you. Sorry, Commissioner Kirscher. Commissioner Kirscher, Mary from SCAP. Okay, I just I'm here to request that the Commissioner, Seneca County Commissioners, redesignate the public transportation 5311 funding and any other funding that's associated with public transportation and allow SCAT to continue to provide the service throughout the county. Uh, this, uh, I believe, this is for three years. Yes, it's for three years. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, yes, and yes. Uh, Stacy, uh, <laughs> what, what do we do here? I got uh, a resolution authorizing the redesignation of rural public transit grantee. And again, this is for three years. And we also have a letter to sign to uh, send down to the state. Okay. So. Uh, commissioners, any comments? Commissioner Kirshner? No, I would. I would, I would uh, move that the resolution be approved and I'll allow it to be with my gratitude to SCAT for all their hard work. Thank you, Mike. I have a little data I want to throw to you so you know why you're signing this again. Absolutely. So in 2019, we've transported almost 70,000 people just in Seneca County. But then when the COVID hit, we, went, we dropped down to 44,000. And then this past year, we are back up to 49. And so far in 2022, we've transported over 20,000. So we're going to exceed the six. Uh, uh, if things keep going the way they're supposed to be going and they tend to be, we will probably hit close to 75 to 80,000 people transporting to medical, doctor, beauty shop, bars, funerals, <laughs> school, college. It's amazing. Just to, we take anybody yeah. where they want to go. Our budget this year is going to be about $2.3 million for operating and capital loan, capitalized maintenance. Um, last year we renovated, I wrote a grant, we were able to renovate a garage in, a, in Bursaris. It was a county owned garage. We put $310,000, renovated it. We're storing our buses there and we're also paying the commissioner's rent. So it's a win-win for everyone. Um, also, uh, this past year we wrote a grant. We are renovating the railroad depot down in Galleon. We are going to relocate our office down there and that's going to be over $200,000 to renovate that. And again, the city of Galleon can charge us rent. 80% of it's covered, so why not? Um, this year for 2023, we've got our letter of intent. I've been approved for several things. 
uh, Faustoria, we're going to renovate or build a building for $410,000, 100%, no local match needed, to renovate a place for the, either the city, the county, or someone um, to store our buses down there. We also have been approved to extend a route, the Shelton Shuttle, um, to extend that route from Faustoria to Tiffin. Hopefully there'll That's be, good news. we're looking at three shifts for the um, industrial park to help people from the Faustoria area get to work. That's going to be the primary. That's usually called a commuter route, but they've kind of done away with that word. Um, but that's our hopes. But anybody can ride it. It's not just somebody going to work. You can go to dialysis. Um, you can go visit somebody and go we'll catch a movie, go out to dinner, go to the workout. The bus will be going back and forth. We're thinking three or four times a day. Again, it's going to be probably driven by whenever we can get in the industrial parks to allow us to know what time their shift chains are. Because mm -hmm. if we can help people get to work, we don't want transportation. I can't get there because I don't have a ride. Well, if we can break down that barrier, that's what we're trying to do. So we've already been approved for the funding. I don't know the exact dollar figure on that one yet because we don't know what it's going to cost, especially with insurance and fuel costs right now. There's a teetering around. Um, as you know, we did start the Shelton Shuttle. Um, there's supposed to be three routes, but unfortunately we don't have the driving staff. It's hard to get CDL drivers. Um, and it's national. It's not just Seneca County or just Ohio. This is a national issue, um, especially since they just put on more burden to get a CDL. You know, there's a lot more involved. It used to be two to four hundred dollars to go get your CDL. Now it's four to five thousand dollars to get a CDL. So it's it, it, they've made it tougher. I am on a committee with going before FTA Federal Transit. I am been asked to be on this committee because I like to talk um, <laughs> and asking that they make an exemption for school buses and for public transit. You know, if they want to keep it with the truckers and the, those type, we're, we're asking to exempt us because there's such a demand right now for school bus drivers and CDL drivers. There's such a public transit. And I'm sure it's probably that way, nothing against truck driving or anything like that, but you know, they go cross country, everything. We don't, we're local, you mm -hmm. know. Um, so we're trying to do that. Um, right now, um, that's about it. I do wanna ask if, oh, if it is okay, that whenever you are doing the park out at the, you're, I understand you're building a big park or something out at the Opportunity Center, keep me in mind. I can write a grant and get 80% of your parking lot redone. Why pay 100% when I can get 80 covered for you? Just keep me in the loop. We were talking about you yesterday. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's we were nice. visiting. <laughs> <laughs> we were visiting the uh, the fitness barn, and we walked around behind. And we were actually we had talking some discussions. Parking. So mm -hmm. yeah, if, if I can call it a park and ride, I can get 80% of it covered for the county. So we'll we'll see if we'll be getting back. It won't be actually, in 20. That's exactly what it is. That's it won't happened. be a 2023 project because I didn't get approved for that because I didn't know about it. But I started reading about it. But 24, I can definitely get it done if you just want to do like gravel slide right now. Because because Scat's right there, I can call it a park and ride. They can park there and ride public transit, sure. whether they do or not. It really matters. Really. Well, but, we, um, that's that's it, and that can be used possibly for a, a launch point into the park back yes. there, that kind of yes. thing. It's right next to you. I think I think this all makes. Right. And we, right now we have another project in mind. It's probably a $3.5 million project, but I'm not ready to go public with it yet because I have to get my key players on board and the key players will be the commissioners and I haven't had time to run something past them before I even start writing a grant of amount. Okay. But I did meet with ODOT. All the funding sources were at the table and they are on board with it. So You're amazing. No, it's, 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 I have a great team out there. And one last thing is um, when you pull into the SCAT building on the southwest corner, we would like to plant a tree in memory of Don Hammer. Don Hammer was a driver, a trainer for SCAT. It's in an area that your, your folks mow for us, so I want to make sure that it's okay that we put a tree in his memory with a plaque. We'll make sure that it's a uh, Mohawk nursery is the one performing this service for us. And if it was okay that we do, because you guys do mow that area. Okay. Yeah. Stacey and I'll John. I'll get with John just to yeah make sure it should be okay yeah i don't think we looked and we didn't see any drainage tiles or tiles or whatever you'll call it up here in north ohio mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll call it cricks and ditches <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> so like i said um we we would like to get your permission to do that um we will pay 100 percent of the cost for it and everything because there was donations that came in in honor of Don Hammer, Virtually. memory of Don. Nice. Um, so my drivers, I think it'd be nice for them to see this as they're leaving their route and when they come in at the end of the day, because he was a huge impact in our, our facility. Very nice. All right. So we have a first and a second by uh, Commissioner Schuff. 
Uh, let's take a roll call to uh, approve your resolution. Commissioner Kirshner? Yes. Commissioner Schoff? Yes. Commissioner Paradiso? Yes. Perfect. Take care. Thank you. For you yes. So on the CDL part, do you need to have a passenger endorsement also, or is it just strictly a CDL? No, it has to have a passenger endorsement. Sure. Um, the beds, are we ready? Okay. That's that's the only one that we have. Perfect. It has to have a passenger or school bus. Okay. 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 Thank you. Mary, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks, Mary. Okay, so we have a bid opening for the 2022 chip seal project. Yeah. Uh, that's around the sign-in sheet. And I think there was somebody waiting in the and now lobby. Let the county administrator <clears throat> pull things together. Commissioner Kirshner, I'm not sure you heard me uh, mention, but I have a funeral to attend, so uh, we're going to kind of keep things moving, if that's okay with you. Um, totally, yes. So, thank you. Okay. Floor's yours. Yeah, just All eyes are on you. It's real yeah, quiet. Yeah, of course it is. All right, so this, I think you had mentioned, is our chip seal uh, project, 2022 project. Uh, the engineer's estimate on this project is $626,485, 626-485.00. The first bid I have is Allied Construction out of West Union, Ohio. Their total bid amount is Second one I have is uh, Unilinux Incorporation out of Oak Harbor, Ohio. <coughs> Total bid amount is eight hundred thirty-five thousand six hundred fifty-one dollars and ninety-seven cents. Eight three five six five one point nine seven. Bergman Incorporated out of Genoa, Ohio. <coughs> Their total bid amount six hundred eighty seven thousand six hundred ninety four dollars and sixty cents six eight seven six nine four point six zero. And those are all I have for the first bid. So we turn those over to engineer. Mark. Yep, the engineer. Okay. Hey, could I ask one, could I sure. ask one question of the engineer, please? Um, Mark, Mark is on the phone. I understand. Yes. I assume that your estimate, Mark, was uh, prior to the increase in costs in the area of petroleum. Yeah. Yeah. If you were. Yes. Yeah, so we are we had already inflated our price by nearly 10%. Uh, and this represents uh, 
at least another 10% uh, on top of that. We did do our estimate prior to uh, the uh, uh, global issue that's happening in Ukraine. Um, yeah, it is certainly uh, gonna have its effect on all the contracts that we are seeing for the rest of the year. Uh, yeah, that's what I assume, Mark, so I just wanna make sure we clarify that. Yeah, thank you. Yep, good point. So we will have another bid opening at 10.30. Uh, so between now and then, uh, county administrator's report. Uh, I don't have anything today. Okay. Uh, commissioner's report, Commissioner Kirshner. No, I just want to make sure everybody shows up to watch Tyler and Jimmy play basketball. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good is that one. A side, is, is that a side league gymnasium? It sure is. <laughs> yeah, okay. Jimmy's, right, Jimmy's, well, Jimmy's going to be eating basketball. This is a draw. <laughs> this is always weak. This is always you better the, tape uh, those ankles up, Commissioner. So, uh, <laughs> uh, it, it will be a fun evening. So School we'll opportunity watch. celebrity game tonight. Uh, thank you, uh, Commissioner. So Jimmy Flynn and Commissioner Shelf will be playing in that game. Uh, commissioner report for yourself. Yeah. Um, had a busy week this week. Uh, had the opportunity to get with John Logsdon yesterday and uh, as we go through our capital budget and look at the needs and wants and that sort of thing, um, John and I went out and toured many of the county facilities, got an inside outside type look at some of our different uh, facilities out there at the campus, the RTA building. Uh, we didn't get to hit every single property yesterday but it's nice to kind of go through these things and kind of see what needs were placed and where they're having issues just so when we're up here voting on things gives you a little bit of a better idea or education on what we're voting on. Um, this Saturday we have the demolition out there at the Opportunity Park as we get rid of the old equipment and get ready to put up the new. Um, volunteered to uh, bring out my sledgehammer and uh, rig and do some of that stuff. So I think that day Tony and I will be kind of dividing and conquering as you attend the uh, Library of Butler Museum event. Uh, as uh, Councilor, uh, Commissioner Kirshner said, the uh, Developmental Center uh, basketball game is tonight. We also had an OSS policy committee meeting this week, uh, and then after last week's meeting, we had Farm Bureau and uh, some other good meetings. And I just want to give a shout out or congratulations to uh, Bear Brothers, uh, the new owners Russ and uh, Deb Garris. It's just nice to see these kinds of businesses that have been around for I want to say I'm talking that's been around since 1880, but I mean going on 140 plus years. I mean it's just impressive to see the amount of businesses we have here in Seneca County and how they tend to survive, whether it be Kibler Shoes or many of the many other ones, but uh, we've got a lot of old businesses that continue just to carry on and thrive here in the community, and I just think that's an exciting thing, and it's a, a testament here to a community that supports them. That's all I have. Yeah, good job. Uh, no uh, report for myself today. I do have one item in old business, so do we still have a little time yet? Yeah. Okay. So I'd like to uh, uh, move on to old business. I just have one item I'd like to bring up. Um, we have Mayor Scott Harrison in the in the audience today, and uh, uh, he's here for several reasons. But I'd like to read uh, the MS letter that you presented uh, to us on Monday. So, um, as everyone knows, the uh, commissioners are. Our position on uh, moving forward with EMS, there are 16 uh, entities, legal entities, townships and villages that um, have been getting together and, and, and trying to come together with uh, uh, some questions and, and basically just to have the same vision to move forward. And so we've canceled a few meetings, a few meetings uh, were canceled because of weather. Uh, we will not be meeting this coming Thursday in April. Uh, there's another event that night, but our next meeting, formal meeting with EMS and the commissioners will be May 5th. But um, we did change that to the 21st, but we're now changing uh, it yes, to the Yes, so that's so uh, we will not be meeting on the 21st because we changed it. Yep. Uh, Commissioner Kirshner, we will now be meeting on uh, May 5th. Now, and um, as far as an update, this letter was submitted. It's now public knowledge. Um, and, and it was provided by uh, the mayor of the village of Bettsville, uh, Scott Harrison, who's the spokesperson for the 16 entities. And basically what the letter says, uh, if I could break it down into three main points, 
is number one, the group feels uh, that November, <clears throat> putting a levy on the ballot this November is too early. So they've requested, they're requesting more time and they would like to do it in May of 2023 um, to better uh, prepare for that, number one. Uh, number two, they, uh, we've received some resolutions back. There's some hesitations with some entities, primarily because they have questions. So they would like to see uh, uh, more specifics from the county as far as uh, contract and what we might be providing them. Um, and so uh, I've talked to Stacy about that and we're kind of um, talking internally there that we could provide. Um, and then three, they, uh, they're, they're getting close on agreement to a levy amount. They uh, will make that public uh, at, our, at the May meeting, right, Mayor? We're privy to say that now, but I think it's safe to say that that we started with a 4.71 mil concept. Uh, we simply just took four stations times 600,000, and that would be the levy needed. It's it's the feeling of the group that that's that's on the high side. So we will let the group continue to meet and and look forward to the May meeting. Um, did I summarize your letter? Yeah, that's correct. That's pretty good so I, I really appreciate the group getting back it's encouraging to know they're meeting it's encouraging to know um, they're immersing in, in consensus and that's really what we need we, we need to be able to work with a, a group and not have everybody um, speaking their own agenda so thank you for the letter uh, that's all I have for old business uh, any uh, other commissioner? Uh, yes, Mr. Purdy. So, yes, sir. I unfortunately, I unfortunately have the event scheduled on May the fifth um, on my calendar, so it's a probability that I will not be able to make that be. I'll be out of state as well. I'll try to zoom in. Okay. Uh, can uh, okay, more to come. Uh, I, uh, if we get adjusted, just let me know. Yeah, more to come. Okay, well, right now we're holding a May 5th, and we'll uh, take right. that under advisement. Thanks okay. for the heads up, both of you. These are the kind of things that happened. And, right. you know, when you're trying to get 16 plus 3 together, it's just, it's amazing. But thank you. Okay, uh, bid opening. Are we ready? Uh, yeah, it's 10.30. Okay, it's 10.30. <clears throat> Uh, the uh, engineer is still on the line. We now will have a bid opening for a superstructure replacement, uh, pre-stressed uh, box beam. Tim, can you make sure uh, Commissioner Kirshner gets that letter? Send him an email. I just sent it to him. Yeah, I did. saw. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I got it. Okay, thank you. I got good. it. I thank just you. had a copy email just this moment. Okay, good. Thank you, guys. Okay. Um, let's see. The engineer's estimate on this project is uh, 479200 479 uh, the first and only bid I have is R&I Construction out of Tiffin, Ohio. Their total bid amount, uh, 476,528.66, Okay. Uh, that and that'll go to Mark two. Go to Mark as well. Okay. Uh, any any comments on the bid opening? If not, we'll move on to new business. Commissioners. Okay, new business. Okay, I have one uh, okay. supplemental appropriation, um, putting nine hundred ninety-eight dollars and eleven cents into the inmate psychotropic medication line. This is for uh, a payment correction. Um, and then I think the rest I have is in paper. 
I have a resolution authorizing a fund advance repayment from the Bulletproof Vest Grant Fund 1039 back to the general fund in the amount of $22,053.77. I have a resolution authorizing a fund advance repayment from the Impaired Driving Enforcement Program Fund 1059 to the general fund in the amount of $10,000. I have a resolution authorizing a fund advance repayment from the uh, IDEP, the Impaired Driving Enforcement Program Fund, the 1086 to the general fund in the amount of $10,000. Um, I have a resolution authorizing a fund advance repayment from the Selective Traffic Enforcement Program. Uh, fund number 1222 to the general fund. This is in the amount of 5000 And I have a resolution authorizing the fund transfer be made to for, for the LGF alternative formula to the ambulance service fund. So what we do every year, uh, transferring 320000 uh, from the general fund to the ambulance service <coughs> fund. Okay, I have a question. Sure. So... Uh, isn't that budget 400 don't we start with 400 we have 70 for EMA we yeah. have uh, 320 for EMS and we have 10,000 so for 400. flood flood plain we've already done, done the flood plain this year so it's 400 total. okay so is the 320 going to EMA EMS. or EMS EMS okay and then I have a second one authorizing the fund transfer be made uh, to the now. EMA fund. Yeah, I, okay. And so that's, that's the how the fourth broke down. Yes, yep. 70 for EMA, 100, or 320 for EMS, and 10,000 for floodplain. So for those in the EMS, two of the 16 are here, it's 320 that we put in general fund, right? Yep. Okay, for EMS. Today. For EMS, yep. Thanks, that's good. And then I have a resolution entering into a, the interim agreement, uh, emergency medical services agreement with Jackson Liberty and Bettsville Joint Ambulance District effective December 8th, 2021. They had signed the agreement. Um, we didn't get it on our board session to get it signed, so we're gonna do it retroactive. Uh, they had already sent us their uh, payment, so we just wanna make sure we get the, and again, this is just the interim. Is this until, what we did at ABR? Yes. Same. Same one last same. week. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yep. They had right. both signed their agreements and we were working under them. We just have to sign them. And that's all I have. Any, any discussion? New business? I'll move for approval. I'll second that. You're seconding I'm it? I'm going to second. Okay. Yep. Ask for roll call. <laughs> you confused me on that one. Hold on. Tony second. Commissioner Kirshner? Yes. Commissioner Schaff? Yes. Commissioner Paradiso? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're moving along real well here. Um, so it's time for public comment. Um, David, Zach, Adam Gilmore, any Very comments, good. please? Thank you. T-SEPs here. Um, not you, much in the way of updates. Uh, I know Tyler uh, or Commissioner Schaff had uh, brought to our attention some potential opportunities for the opportunity entrepreneurial opportunity clearinghouse hmm. uh, we're going to we're moving forward following up on them I just want to make sure uh, you all are aware that uh, you know you guys are the input that you bring in to the table is uh, being used and getting out there so thank you for the recommendation thank you yeah, good it's nice seeing both of you at the downtown a little informal downtown meeting last night and good discussion it was good well, to always see always nice to see you there good so and I have a couple of yeah, updates. Yeah, so one update is sure. uh, a lot of exciting things going on in rural Seneca County right now. We're hoping within the next month or so to announce a large project in rural Seneca County, which we think will be very exciting, uh, as well as a number of other kind of smaller businesses. So economic development activity in rural Seneca County is very, very strong. Also in, in the city of Tiffin, which is, you know, picks everything. Uh, so really excited about that and uh, excited to share with you that over the next 60 days. Um, the next thing is, uh, as your economic development agent, on occasion we will just uh, throw our hat in the ring in providing um, uh, food for thought. We know there, there have been very robust discussions about uh, the East Tower project, about EMA, and about uh, several other things that are exciting projects for, that the, the county is a partner on. 
Um, just had our executive committee meeting this morning, and as an organization, we just wanted to make sure that all the commissioners were aware that we we believe East Tower would be a, a wonderful project for the community if it if it makes sense and and and, and can be done. Um, the uh, the downtown development plan. One thing we haven't heard. We want to make sure that you were aware of that was uh, adopted in 2016. That had the East Green in it. That had the Justice Center in it. Um, also has the uh, creation of more green space with the RTA is has the renovation of East Tower. So in terms of long term strategies, this would be a wonderful project to get done. And then just uh, with my uh, my dear colleague Mark Zimmerman, uh, we would uh, just add from a, a benefit quantity standpoint uh, that downtown uh, has been I think a, a, not only a driver of additional sales tax we've had 35 million dollars in investment obviously a chunk of that was the new Justice Center um, even last year we had 44 new jobs being created in the downtown uh, we believe that if, if that if that East Tower could be redone uh, and uh, for government arts or, or other use that would also have impacts, uh, impacts not only on the, the Carnegie Library as a as potential additional development and other things around it, but we know that industrial companies and other commercial businesses make decisions based on the downtown. And so we think it would have a positive impact not only on the greater Tiffin area, but the entire county in terms of economic development impact. So we haven't, we haven't officially, we'll be following with letter just so you know that if you can find a way to do it, we think it would be great to be done but we understand we're one voice in the many things that you have to consider. But we wanted to make sure we were on the record saying, if it can be done, it would be great, and we support it. Okay. There's, there's a plan and an MOU, they're two different things. Yes, so the downtown like development. I'd like you to send me the plan. I will send you the plan. I yep, have the I, MOU. I would, yep, yep, that was done. Yeah, you might city, as well just city paid $150,000. We had professional consultant. I, I remember that. Paid. I will be happy to I send that to all three handle. commissioners. Yeah, yeah, and that's, yep, just I will be happy to do that. Absolutely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Anything else? Nope. Yeah. It's a great day to be sent to you. Uh, Mayor, anything? Everybody good? We're good. Okay. Uh, Commissioner candidates in the office, they're uh, smiling. Okay, so Jimmy, public comment? Yeah, sure. Uh, we've got some people here with us on Zoom. If you'd like to come forward, you can hit the unmute button and make your comment now. I did see uh, before Mark Zimmerman left, he said thanks, everyone. So Okay, good. Yeah. I think other than that, unless there's anybody else, I think we're good. Okay, so... Uh, uh, one last thing here. One okay, point. one final comment? Sure. I was just looking at the calendar. Did you say there was a PSET board meeting this morning? Executive committee. That's, that'd be Mike then, wouldn't it? Yeah. 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 Yes. Okay, gotcha. Yes, I, I did attend the board meeting this morning, yes. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Exactly. I just didn't exactly. see, see it on our calendars, gotcha. All right. And we need to circle back on our calendar often around here. It's a. Mm -hmm. You do amazing logistics yeah, it's amazing keeping the meeting straight. That's, people, that's, that's crazy. quite a thing, what you've accomplished. And kudos to Stacy and the rest of the team. So we, uh, we appreciate everyone's comments. Uh, uh, short meeting today is 1043. And so hearing no further comment, meeting adjourned. Thank you.